And now, a stream of conscience commentary with Doug Sutherland. When George Bissell and Edward Drake struck oil near Titusville, Pennsylvania in 1859, the primary use of oil in the U.S. was for lighting and medicinal purposes. The internal combustion engine was still being perfected, and our industrialized economy was dependent on other sources of energy. With larger oil and natural gas finds in the Midwest, East Texas, and the Gulf, the era of cheap oil rapidly transformed the nation. The U.S. became the world's number one oil producer, and our love affair with the automobile took off, along with our dependence on plastics and other petrol-based products and technologies. A century and a half later, much has changed. The U.S. has dropped to third place among oil-producing nations, and we now depend on foreign sources of oil for 70% of our needs. And unlike in 1859, when oil would literally burst forth from the earth or possibly require pumping from relatively shallow depths, today, new oil and gas finds are harder and harder to extract. Unfortunately, we are now addicted to cheap oil. Our entire lifestyle and social structure depend on it. But the price is going up, and the detrimental environmental effects of burning fossil fuels are increasingly apparent. But like a junkie addicted to heroin, we seem only to care about where to get our next fix. The controversial gas extraction technique called hydraulic fracturing, or fracking, is just one of many dilemmas facing our nation today as we try to hang on to a lifestyle and an economy dependent on the and addicted to cheap energy. The gas industry has been touting natural gas as the bridge to the renewable energy economy of the future. But as we've seen, this supposedly abundant supply of natural gas lies trapped miles below the earth in ancient shale deposits. And the extraction of this gas pits our need for cheap domestic energy against our need to protect the environment and the public health. Technology has given us amazing new techniques to drill miles below the earth, but those techniques are far from safe and far from clean. As the BP Gulf oil spill of 2010 showed, huge environmental accidents can happen in the fossil fuel extraction business. And in our search for cheap energy, company executives, engineers, and government regulators are all too willing to look the other way. Harm to public health and the environment are the collateral damage. Fracking has been implicated in many health issues. It can and has polluted water supplies, and it may even be responsible for increased earthquake activity in regions where gas drilling has expanded. A similar dilemma faces our nation with the Keystone XL pipeline project. The existing Keystone pipeline connects the Athabasca tar sand fields in northeastern Alberta, Canada to refineries in Illinois and Oklahoma. Like natural gas shale deposits, tar sands are another energy solution that is touted to reduce our dependence on Middle Eastern oil. But tar sand oil extraction is one of the dirtiest sources of crude oil available. Like fracking, the process of extracting the bitumen oil from tar sands requires great quantities of water and a local source of energy to produce steam to process the bitumen into synthetic oil before sending it down the pipeline. In addition, extraction from this unconventional oil source has been estimated to release twice the greenhouse gases as that of conventional crude oil extraction. As with fracking, we are risking the air, water, and the planet for the chance to get our next fix of cheap energy. The Republican drill baby drill crowd are pushing President Obama to approve an extension to the existing pipeline, a project called Keystone XL. This pipeline would expand the flow of this dirty synthetic oil from the Canadian tar sand fields south to Oklahoma and on to the Gulf states. Along the way, the XL pipeline would pass through environmentally sensitive areas, including the Agalala Aquifer a vast underground aquifer located beneath the Great Plains. One of the world's largest freshwater reservoirs, the Agalala provides drinking water for two million people and supports $20 billion in agriculture. A pipeline spill could contaminate the aquifer and devastate the Midwestern economy. Is our next fix of cheap fossil fuel really worth those risks? 
Al Gore made the term inconvenient truth famous with his book tour warning about climate change. It may well turn out that the greatest inconvenient truth is that our modern society built on cheap fossil fuel is simply no longer sustainable. Those on the right would say that the free market will solve all these problems. But the market is far from free today, with massive government subsidies supporting our continued use of dirty, non-renewable sources of energy, and the externalities of environmental damage and public health degradation are almost by definition external to market forces, unless we make sure they are included. It's time for us to start building the renewable energy economy of the future today and stop promoting dirty fossil fuel solutions that are nothing more than a bridge to nowhere and a danger to our health and planet. I'm Doug Sutherland, and this has been a Stream of Conscience Commentary. Thanks for watching.